All right, today on Tree Talk, we're talking about another aspen, back-to-back, -back, big tooth aspen. So we talked a lot about the differences between big tooth and quaking aspen in the last one, so we're really gonna focus on big tooth this time. Um, you can see, let's go ahead and start with the leaves. Uh, we can see those big teeth, uh, those, those dentations on the edge. Um, we can compare that to our quaking aspen, which has that the very fine serrations on the edge. Otherwise, a relatively similar leaf shape, but I love the rounded, uh, toothed, big tooth aspen leaf. Um, just like trembling aspen, um, they, it ha they both have a flattened petiole, so they do this in the wind, uh, making them look really pretty and shimmery uh, when the wind blows through them. Um, the quaking aspen has that golden, that kind of famous golden color. Um, big tooth is more of a deep yellow, and sometimes it'll get a little orangish. Um, I've never seen it get uh, uh, deeper into reds, but I've heard they can get into reds too, which is pretty cool. Um, the bark is a pretty distinctive feature, uh, telling the difference between the two. So in quaking aspen, you'll start to get these kind of these ridges and furrows um, towards the base, uh, but they'll either won't go up very high or they'll only kind of go up partially up the tree. Uh, this is a mature quaking aspen, um, and it is, it is occupying the canopy of this forest, and you can see those ridges and furrows go all the way up very close to the top uh, until it gets smooth again. Um, another thing to note with these ridges and furrows is that they are, uh, compared to other species, um, they're kind of tight. You know, like a chestnut oak or something, those ridges would be, would be wider in between, uh, or the furrows would be wider in between the ridges. Uh, these ridges are very flattened and they're kind of tight together. Um, speaking of the ecology, um, they occupy in many cases the exact same uh, habitats as quaking aspen. Sometimes they will grow in stands together. Um, so you may be thinking, you know, how could we have two aspen species very closely related? They do hybridize also sometimes, by the way, um, that, you know, occupy similar niches, uh, but they just have different ecology that sometimes will benefit quaking aspen, sometimes will benefit um, big tooth aspen. So big tooth aspen is more of a canopy tree, as you can see. Um, it is typically in a kind of a co-dominant status in the canopy, so it is not, you know, the white pine standing 20, 30, 40 feet above the canopy. Um, it's kind of right at the top of the canopy. We're talking about sort of 75 uh, to, you know, 90 feet sort of tall um, at maximum range. Um, they don't really get super, super wide. Um, uh, but when they are in the woods, um, they are also very intolerant of shade, like quaking aspen. So they're here in the woods, they are sending out tons of seeds every year. They are very prolific seeders. Um, and if we're in the shade, like we are in these hemlock woods here today, um, those seedlings are not going to do very well. Um, but if there becomes an opening in the canopy nearby, like a big tree fall, now we have sunlight and uh, the, the big tooth aspen can kind of explode out from there. Typically, I find uh, big tooth aspen, I'm just on a hike, I'm in the middle of, uh, you know, an oak forest, and I will just see one of these big tooth aspen leaves on the ground, on the trail in front of me, and I'll say, whoa, you know, where's this aspen coming from? And I'll look around and I eventually I'll, I'll find it. Um, and so yeah, typically it's kind of mixed into the forest. It can be in pure stands. Um, when it's in pure stands, it's typically a little bit more open in the understory than our uh, quaking aspen, which is those kind of thicket type habitats. Um, some other uh, differences, this will, the big tooth aspen will root sprout like crazy, uh, just like the quaking aspen, but not as prolifically. Um, and so uh, we're, we're, again, looking at those sort of slightly different life histories where this is kind of relying on seed and forest dynamics, canopy gap dynamics. It is also a pioneer species, so it will move into new habitats too, um, but it's just so different than uh, that quaking aspen, which um, is, is really reliant on forming a thicket, a huge stand, uh, and then that stand being revitalized by fire. Um, just like quaking aspen, big tooth aspen is also a uh, fire dependent species, so fire is really helping it to, uh, to remain in a stand. Um, and like big tooth aspen, it's really valuable for uh, really the similar wildlife species um, and human uses. So very important pulp wood, um, very important for elk, moose, beavers, uh, ruffed grouse, although not as useful because again, it's typically 
a handful of trees or a smaller stand within uh, a forest um, or a, a more open forest rather than just the, the crazy amount of biomass that quaking aspen um, can often have. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but the range <laughs> where they overlap, so a big tooth aspen is really only in eastern forests. Um, it goes down into the mid-Atlantic. I've seen a few in North Carolina. I think that's kind of the southern end of its range. And then it will also go up uh, you know, into Maine, uh, and then it's really heavy around the Great Lakes states, where I think it's kind of uh, very, very abundant. Um, but that's it, really an eastern forest species. And again, quaking aspen is, is covering a lot of different habitats across the continent. So there you have it, big tooth aspen, another really awesome aspen species um, that you'll probably see a little bit more frequently in our eastern forests than quaking.